Today, we will look at creating an accent wall with these leftover engineered wood flooring. These were kindly donated to me by a friend who had no further use for it. So I came up with a plan and drew some plausible accent patterns that would look random and natural. I decided on using the third design, which means I can now decide where the battens should go for this. The battens are some 20mm MDF strips that has been recycled from an old wardrobe. The board will be nailed to the battens using this brad nailer. All the nail heads would then be filled in with this back sticks. So the first course of action is cutting all the boards to the final size. I used my miter saw but you could use a circular saw or a jigsaw or even a hand saw for the same job. I also cut off the tongue of the flooring boards. This is to make the installation easier. We will revisit this later down in the video. With all the parts ready, next I turn my attention to the battens. I used a drill press to countersink in some pilot holes. And if you don't have a drill press, you can always use a handheld drill. I use some 75mm long decking screws to hold the battens in place. The wall where this is going to is a brick wall. So to find the corresponding position on the wall, I gently tap the batten on the screw head. With the hole positions now marked, I used a SDS drill to drill the screw holes. I have mentioned this in one of my earlier videos that to avoid a runaway situations while using an SDS drill, I set the drill to its drill mode initially. And once a few centimeters in, I then switch that to the hammer mode. With this, you will always get a tight hole and most importantly, the hole is where you actually want that to be. With the wall plug in place and the screws lined up on it, I then fasten down all the battens. Take your time to align the boards that makes the most aesthetic sense. This is one of the reasons why I removed the tongue from all the flooring boards. Now at this section nearer to the wall, I left a space of around 15 millimeters. For this, I used a spacer to achieve this. It's not that I want you to see all the individual nails that I drew in, but I just wanted to highlight the workflow and the pattern in doing this. At this point, I reached the power outlet at the bottom. 
So I traced the dimensions on the back side of these boards and then took it to my workshop and used a jigsaw to cut it out. Not sure exactly what happened, but I had three battens that were a bit longer than expected. So I used a multi-tool to cut that out. It wasn't ideal as it left a mark on my newly painted wall, but a little bit of touch-up solved that. Now, not all the nails went in fully, so I used a nail punch to hammer it down. Next, I used these wax filler strips, and this is to try and hide the nail heads and to blend that in. Since this is indoors and it's vertical, I didn't want to heat the wax up. I just tried to smudge it on and I used a mix of different colors to try and match the wood at that section. And I believe at the end it looks reasonably alright. So with this, the accent wall is done, but wait before you go, I got another bonus project coming up in the same video which uses the same engineering wood floor and is going to be fabricated on an IKEA wardrobe. Now I've done this before and it works really well. The cupboard that you see in the background on the left hand corner was finished the same way. No one would believe that it's an IKEA bog standard wardrobe. I need to just cover up one side of this unit. So with the unit on its side, I laid the boards on it. Now these boards have an unfinished edge where you can see the end plywood layers. So to cover that up, I cut down some strips of 15mm pine, which is the same thickness as the boards. These are all going to be glued and brad nailed in. I'm using 25mm brads that will penetrate the floorboards and sink in 10mm into the unit's side carcass. That should be plenty strong enough until the glue sets off. Now make sure that the nail that you use doesn't penetrate all the way through the sides. This pine strip was stained in my workshop and at that time I thought it was a perfect color match but hey it's not that far off and hopefully no one would notice that. Now to secure the whole thing properly I screwed it into this bracket which in turn is screwed into the wall.
So with the glass door back on, it feels that it isn't taking too much room in my tiny study. So what do you guys think about this axe and wall projects? Do leave a comment below if you have any questions and please like, subscribe and share if you find this useful. Thanks.